Over 2,000 years ago, a band of Greek heroes set sail on an epic journey, their quest to find the legendary Golden Fleece. This is the story of Jason and the Argonauts, a tale that has captivated imaginations for millennia. But what if I told you there might be more to this myth than meets the eye? Hi, I'm DJ, and welcome to Quick History Hits. Today, we're embarking on our own quest to uncover the truth behind one of history's greatest legends. We'll retrace the steps of Jason and his Argonauts, from the shores of the Black Sea to the peaks of the Caucasus Mountains. Along the way, we'll discover how this ancient myth might be rooted in a very real journey of discovery and adventure. The story of Jason and the Argonauts is one of the most enduring legends from ancient Greece. It goes that Jason, a young Greek prince, was tasked with retrieving the Golden Fleece to claim his rightful throne. This wasn't just any ordinary fleece, it was said to be from a magical golden ram, and possessing it would prove Jason's right to rule. But the fleece was kept in a far-off land called Colchis, guarded by a fearsome dragon that never slept. To reach it, Jason would need to sail across the treacherous Black Sea, facing numerous perils along the way. It was a journey so dangerous that no ordinary crew would do. And so Jason gathered a crew of heroes, the Argonauts. These weren't just any sailors, they were the greatest heroes of their age. Among them was Hercules, known for his incredible strength. There was Orpheus, whose music could charm even the rocks and trees. Atalanta, the swift-footed huntress, joined the crew, as did the winged sons of the North Wind, Zetes and Calais. Together, they set sail in the ship Argo, a vessel said to be blessed by the goddess Athena herself. Their journey was fraught with danger from the start. They faced storms sent by angry gods, navigated through the clashing rocks of the Simplegades and battled fearsome harpies. When they finally reached Colchis, Jason's trials were far from over. The king of Colchis, Aetes, set seemingly impossible tasks for Jason to complete before he could claim the fleece. With the help of the king's daughter, Medea, who fell in love with him, Jason yoked fire-breathing bulls to a plow, sowed dragon's teeth that sprouted into armed warriors, and finally lulled the ever-watchful dragon to sleep to steal the Golden Fleece. It's a fantastic tale, full of magic, monsters, and heroic deeds. But where exactly was Colchis, and what was this Golden Fleece? To find out, we need to leave the realm of myth and enter the world of archaeology and ancient geography. Our journey begins here, on the eastern shore of the Black Sea, in the modern-day country of Georgia. This region, known to the ancient Greeks as Colchis, was once considered the edge of the known world. Standing here, looking out over the vast expanse of the Black Sea, it's easy to imagine how this place must have seemed to ancient Greek sailors, distant, mysterious and full of potential dangers and riches. Dr. Elena Petrova, an archaeologist specializing in Black Sea cultures, explains the Black Sea was a mysterious place to the ancient Greeks. It was here that myth and reality often blurred. The Greeks called it the hospitable sea, but this was a euphemism. In reality, they considered it a dangerous, storm-prone body of water surrounded by hostile tribes. But if it was so dangerous, why would the Greeks sail here at all? The answer might lie in something very real and very valuable. For centuries, the rivers flowing from the Caucasus Mountains have carried gold. The locals developed an ingenious method to collect this gold, using sheepskins in the riverbeds to trap the precious metal. The fleece with its golden particles would indeed look like a treasure worthy of an epic quest. This technique of gold collection is well documented in the region, Dr. Petrova tells us. The gold-rich fleeces would be hung in trees to dry, and from a distance they might well have looked golden in the sunlight. It's not hard to see how this could have given rise to the legend of a golden fleece. So we have a potential origin for our magical golden fleece. Not a mystical object, but a very real and valuable commodity that drew Greek traders to these distant shores. But to truly understand the world Jason would have encountered, we need to leave the coast and head into the mountains. Our journey takes us into Svaneti, one of the most remote regions of Georgia. As we climb higher into the Caucasus, the landscape becomes increasingly dramatic. Snow-capped peaks loom above us, while below, rushing rivers carve their way through deep valleys. This is a land that has remained largely unchanged for thousands of years. 
The Svan people have lived here for millennia, preserving a culture that in many ways hasn't changed since Jason's time. Their traditions of horsemanship, their distinctive tower houses, and their methods of gold panning all have roots stretching back centuries, perhaps even millennia. Georgi Chakviani, a local Svan historian, explains the significance of this cultural continuity on our way of life, our customs, they're not just history to us, they're living traditions. The towers you see were built by our ancestors for protection. We still use many of the same techniques for herding, for building, even for collecting gold from our rivers. One of the most spectacular Svan traditions is their annual horse race. It's a wild, no-holds-barred event that showcases the incredible horsemanship of the Svan people. Watching these fearless riders thunder past, it's not hard to imagine how tales of these fierce mountain warriors could have made their way back to Greece, growing more fantastic with each retelling. In ancient times, the Svans were known as fearsome warriors, Chuck Viani tells us. Our horsemanship, our skill with weapons, these would have seemed almost superhuman to outsiders. It's possible that some of the monsters in Greek myths were inspired by encounters with mountain peoples like us. But it's not just the people and their customs that might have influenced Greek myths. The landscape itself seems designed to inspire legends. As we climb higher into the mountains, we encounter glaciers, deep caves, and strange rock formations that seem to defy gravity. In a world without scientific explanations for these phenomena, it's easy to see how they might have been attributed to gods or monsters. So, we've seen how the legend of the Golden Fleece might have originated, and how the fierce mountain peoples and dramatic landscape could have inspired some of the fantastical elements of the myth, but what about Jason's voyage itself? Could it be based on real Greek explorations? To answer this question, we need to consider the historical context of the Jason myth. Dr. Marcus Thompson, a maritime historian specializing in ancient Mediterranean and Black Sea navigation, provides some insight. The story of the Argonauts likely represents the Greeks' earliest ventures into the Black Sea. This would have been in the Late Bronze Age or Early Iron Age, around 1200 to 800 BCE. It was a dangerous journey into unknown waters, full of very real perils. The Black Sea's unpredictable weather and rocky shores claimed many ancient ships. The Greeks personified these dangers as monsters and challenges in their myths. The clashing rocks of the Symplegades, for instance, might represent the treacherous Bosphorus Strait, where powerful currents and narrow passages could easily wreck a ship. Navigation in the Black Sea was particularly challenging, Dr. Thompson explains. Unlike the Mediterranean, it has few islands to provide shelter or landmarks. The coastline is often featureless, making it easy to become lost, and sudden, violent storms can whip up without warning. But the rewards were worth the risk. The Argonauts' journey mirrors the establishment of Greek trading colonies along the Black Sea coast. These colonies brought Greek culture into contact with local peoples, leading to a fascinating blend of traditions. We can see evidence of this cultural exchange in archaeological sites all along the Black Sea coast. Greek pottery is found alongside local crafts showing how these cultures interacted and influenced each other. The myth of Jason and the Argonauts might be seen as a cultural memory of these early interactions, a way for the Greeks to make sense of their encounters with strange new lands and peoples. Dr. Petrova shows us some of these artifacts. Look at this Greek crater, a vessel for mixing wine. It was found right here in Georgia, but the decorations show a blend of Greek and local motifs. This is tangible evidence of the cultural exchange that was happening in this region. As we examine these ancient objects touching history with our own hands, it becomes clear that the story of Jason and the Argonauts is more than just a myth. It's a window into a pivotal moment in human history. A time when different cultures were coming into contact, when trade networks were expanding and when the known world was growing larger. But the legacy of Jason and the Argonauts extends far beyond the ancient world. This story has captivated imaginations for over two millennia. It's been retold in countless books, paintings and films, from classical sculptures to Renaissance paintings, from epic poems to Hollywood blockbusters. Jason's quest for the Golden Fleece has been reimagined again and again. Why has this particular myth endured for so long? Perhaps because, at its core, it embodies something fundamentally human, 
the urge to explore, to push beyond the boundaries of the known world. Jason's quest for the Golden Fleece represents the human drive to venture into the unknown, to seek out new lands and new opportunities. It's the same spirit that drove explorers across oceans, that pushed pioneers across continents, and that now propels astronauts into space. In many ways, we're still living out the legacy of Jason and the Argonauts. Every time we embark on a journey to an unfamiliar place, every time we push the boundaries of human knowledge, we're following in their wake. The Golden Fleece might now take the form of scientific discoveries, new technologies, or deeper understanding of our universe, but the quest remains the same. As we stand here on the shores of the Black Sea, where Jason's journey supposedly began, we're reminded of the power of myth to inspire real-world action. The Greeks who followed in Jason's legendary footsteps, establishing trading colonies along these shores, were in a sense making myth into reality. They were transforming unknown, dangerous waters into familiar trade routes, turning legendary lands into real places on their maps. So was Jason real? Did the Argo ever sail? Perhaps not in the way the myths describe. But the story of Jason and the Argonauts represents something very real, the Greek exploration of the Black Sea, the lure of Colchian gold, and the cultural exchanges that followed. The myth captures the very real dangers faced by early explorers, the storms, the hostile tribes, the unfamiliar territories. It also reflects the rewards of such ventures, the wealth, the knowledge, and the expansion of the known world. In Jason's quest, we can see echoes of every expedition that has pushed the boundaries of human experience. Moreover, the story of Jason and the Argonauts reminds us of the power of collaboration and diversity. The Argonauts were a team of heroes, each with their own unique skills and strengths. This aspect of the myth reflects a fundamental truth about human achievement, that our greatest accomplishments often come when we work together, combining different talents and perspectives. As we conclude our journey through the lands of Jason and the Argonauts, we're left with a deeper appreciation for the interplay between myth and reality. We've seen how real geographical features, cultural practices and historical events can give rise to legendary tales. We've also seen how these myths, in turn, can inspire real-world actions and shape the course of history. The story of Jason and the Argonauts is more than just a fantastic tale of heroes and monsters. It's a reflection of humanity's eternal quest for knowledge, wealth and adventure. It's a testament to the power of storytelling to inspire exploration and shape our understanding of the world. As we look out over the Black Sea, the same waters that Jason and his Argonauts supposedly sailed, we're reminded that the spirit of adventure that drove them is still very much alive today. Whether it's in scientific research, space exploration, or simply in our personal journeys of discovery, we're all in our own ways seeking our own golden fleece. It's a reminder that behind even the most fantastic legends often lies a kernel of historical truth, and that the human desire for adventure, for discovery, for pushing beyond the known world, that's as real today as it was in Jason's time. I'm DJ, and this has been Quick History Hits. Until next time, keep exploring.